So once again, huh? good morning, your grace. Good morning, my brother, please. Very happy to be here. I know two things somewhat well. One is canon law, the other is table tennis. Huh? So when dealing with questions on canon law, I consider also like I am playing table tennis only. For which ping pong, huh? for which I am not afraid. I have told the seminarians, if any of them or any of the priests defeat me in table tennis, then I will give treat to the whole seminary. Whole seminary. I am certain that nobody will defeat me also. Okay. Now, this will be more interactive session. Being a canonist, you can make use of me to clarify your doubts and things like that. Uh, just two weeks ago, I was addressing another diocese only on, it is an ongoing formation program, only on canonical matters, only on four hours. Before I presented anything concrete, uh, there were so many questions on different aspects, especially pastoral ministry, sacraments, more questions especially on marriage and so on. You can feel free. Uh, if ever anybody makes me get angry in the class also, I have told the MCL fathers that uh, I will take them for dinner. So you cannot uh, uh, irritate me by your questions. There are only stupid answers, no stupid questions. So you can uh, feel free and then uh, you can always uh, uh, ask me also. It seems one, uh, you know some of the uh, programs have a person who is the MC eh, compared, no? Sometimes they put us into difficulty. A seminarian said it seems. Sometimes some stupid people talk intelligent things. So, uh, sometimes some intelligent people talk stupid things. Now I invite Father Rector to address the gathering. <laughs> Both ways he is caught. If you say something intelligent, it's really stupid. Huh? Like that. Okay. Now, uh, one thing is that, one of the things that you have to know is, today especially, uh, the code itself uh, has different sections on obligation and rights of different members of the people of God different categories of the people of God. In the seminary, maybe you studied for examination. One thing, for example, obligation and rights of all Christian faithful, like fundamental rights, are treated in Canon 208 to 223. And again, obligation and rights of lay people are treated in Canon 224 to 231. So, obligation and rights of lay people. Like that, obligation and rights of clerics 273 to 289. Obligation and rights of clerics. Religious 662 to 672. Besides this, individual office holders like parish priest, vicar general, chancellor, what are their obligations? What are their rights? These are all treated in the court. With regard to the clerics, some things I highlighted already during the talk. First, the Latin court first speaks about obligation of obedience obligation to accept the ministry assigned to them unless there is uh, a legitimate impediment, obligation to cooperate with others and uh, all the spiritual obligations, obligation to celibacy, then uh, the right to association, right and obligation to permanent formation, right to remuneration and then right to lead is obligation to lead a simplicity of life, then things that are forbidden, all these are treated in the code of canon. So one thing, this is with regard to that, often these uh, uh, things uh, come. Uh, section by section, if you want to have any clarification, I am free to give. Especially many questions last time came about more than two hours on more on marriage uh, problems. So um, then secondly, I also mentioned about obligations of parish priests. Canon 5, 28, 29 and also 30. What are their obligations? Their duties. These are treated there also. And then with regard to the sacraments, there are so many. And then new marriage laws. Maybe uh, to start with, if you have some questions, then I can leave it. Yes. Uh, I want you to clarify uh, yeah. what actually. Yes, what is the canon law? Yes. Yeah. 
for the producer just now. Different sections of the capital production. The, for example, the rain. Because some people are also related to the going to some of the selective ways of carrying uh, some aspects. And they are kind of for the bargaining with the territories with the victor for uh, some funding. Uh, picking up what they would like selective. But the overall, for example, the rain, what are the and we currently get the result for the currently, then we have to recognize and then the response. Uh, it's one area that never can come to some great people out of the people. They come forward and they pick up something. So it's something that makes it uncomfortable because that is the only way they can be found. Correct. Yes. Uh, for fathers, this is one of the important areas. Hmm? See, the Latin code classifies the laity in 207 into, uh, in a broad way, for example, the whole people of God are divided into two groups. Those who are called to be sacred ministers and all others are clerics. Sacred ministers means clerics, deacons, priests, bishops. Clerics and sacred ministers are one and the same. So all others are lay people. Those who are not clerics are lay people. But there is a positive definition given in Vatican II, Lumen Gentium 31. They are not clerics, they are uh, not religious, plus their fundamental right is to participate in the tria monera, the teaching, sanctifying and shepherding function of Christ through baptism and confirmation. That is the positive definition. The laity have to teach, they have to sanctify and they have to govern. And then what is their unique uh, identity? To permeate the temporal order with the values of the gospel. There are things which laity, uh, clerics cannot do. They have to do. This is the positive definition of the laity. So one of the obligations, bishops, ours is, Repeatedly, the teaching of the church, Vatican II, the code of canon law only gives juridical expression to the pastoral teaching, theological teaching of Vatican II. One of our obligations is to promote the role of laity. Canon law 275, paragraph 2. Lay members have their own role in the church. So we have to promote their role. Earlier it was considered to pray, pay and obey. No. They have every day. Only certain officers in the church are reserved to the clerics. Like bishop, parish priest, assistant priest. Now chancellor, dyson procurator, notary, uh, judges. So many officers are open to the laity if they are qualified. First of all, that is a big opening on the part of the church. Canon 129 para 2 would say, earlier power of governance only clerics. Now, lay members of the Christ faithful are to participate in the power of governance, collaborate with it. Concretely, what are the means? One thing, by Canon 537, universal law, at the parish level, parish finance council is obligatory. You can't say, I am in a mission country, there are very few people, my income is monthly only 20 rupees. Nothing doing. There should be a parish finance council where there is a, a, the lay members of the faithful, at least three members are there, three faithful are members. I don't know with regard to your diocese, parish pastoral council is compulsory if the bishop makes it compulsory. By universal law, it asks the bishop to consult the senate and then make it obligatory if he considers it opportune for every parish. So these two councils must be vibrant. One of the accusations against the Catholic Church is that we want to do everything alone. It is not only a question of practicality, more advantages when you have counsel. It is a fundamental right by virtue of baptism that people participate. Even if there is problem, doesn't matter. You should have parish finance council and it is highly recommended by general law that every parish has parish pastoral council. 
by which we listen the sense of communion respecting the gifts of the people that's why our church is not very active so many in a, there is some kind of recognition fulfillment job satisfaction in the non catholic churches which our priests do not do. involve as many people as possible we often speak of my dear father sheep stealing we don't know our sheep when they joined pentecostal then my sheep which should have been mine i think it is my sheep it has joined us it has been stolen we should be ashamed to say sheep stealing how many of our parishioners we can call by name we are not able to call by name then how can you say my sheep has been stolen we cannot say so that is one thing there are also other participatory structures at the diocesan level Uh, which is compulsory diocesan finance council in which lay persons also are members diocesan finance council and then college of consultors and senate these are compulsory and diocesan pastoral council may be obligatory may not be obligatory so many of the diocesan synod very rarely conducted lay people are part of it so let the people as i said uh, during the uh, talk that our work is to make the christian community profiting even the definition of parish in 519 canon law 519 speaks about who is a parish priest it says the parish priest is the proper pastor of the parish entrusted to his care to exercise the teaching sanctifying and governing ministry in collaboration with other priests and lay people and with the assistance of lay people the active subject is not only the parish priest it is the whole parish community that is the active subject the ministerial priesthood is at the service of the common priesthood to make the community profiting that's very important we have to respect that laity let them not be only receiving end of course homily soon after the gospel in the mass reserved to the priest and deacons but then other preaching they can do provided they are also qualified and they can lead prayers so many other things can be done by the lay people so laity's participation will make the church more vibrant more vibrant in this context the ssc small christian communities and things like that uh, they, they are being uh, uh, formed as leaders all these things are important any questions for us any topic that's better because i don't want to say something absolutely true but absolutely useless any uh, pastoral ministry yes there when i go to other places they ask so many questions on different areas i am not going to uh, tailor my canonical opinion to suit the needs of individuals even the bishop what i feel it is uh, the teaching of the church law of the church i am going to say yes you have spoken about financial council yes the parish level as well as the diocese diocese level now what may be the uh, legal uh, rights of this uh, finance council yeah legal rights yeah finance council means it's only like an advisory body yeah or they have any like check power and uh, maintaining the accounts by themselves yeah yeah good, good. so <coughs> yes good you have studied in the seminary that time for the examination certain things only so one thing is uh, now concretely our understanding it so in the canon law uh, i am just giving numbers that some of you may note down when you take the old canon law book and then read it fully that's why i am giving numbers not for <laughs> numbers for their sake okay 492 and 93 speaks about the diocesan finance council what the court says it assists the bishop it is presided by the bishop at least three people who are expert uh, i mean well versed in civil law and financial matters that is technical qualification moral qualification persons of outstanding integrity so in the church always not only technical qualification but also moral qualification they help the bishop what are the duties for example they prepare the annual budget the procurator is only the executor then they examine the account submitted by the procurator so of course everything under the authority of the bishop 
under the authority of the bishop. They can't against the mind of the bishop, nothing. But then under the authority of the bishop, <coughs> they prepare the budget, examine the account. When the annual accounts are submitted by all parishes, they have to examine them. And these are some of the duties of the financial council. It doesn't mean, okay, in the civil setup, sometimes all the members are equal. They have more decisive role. But we have to have both for to meet the civil law requirement something and to meet the canon law. Canonically, it is not deliberative. But one thing, the bishop is dependent on this council. Suppose there are 10 members in the council. Unless six members give their yes, he cannot sell a property. He cannot do extraordinary administration. Bishop has complete power except in matters of finance. In selling and in extraordinary administration involving a huge amount. So he needs the consent of both the diocesan finance council and also college of consultors. Suppose there are 10 consultors. At least 6 must say, Bishop, you can do it. Only then. So Bishop is dependent on major financial transactions on both the finance council and the college of consultors. College of consultors. That is it. So I think it would be clear. So there are specific functions given in the law of the church. But it is not the same as in civil law. Civil law general body meeting sometimes can decide everything. Even above the president maybe. But I am not an expert in civil law. But then canonically there is need of a diocese and finance council. Parish level it is consultative only. The diocese and statutes can say for spending more than this amount he needs their consent like the Dyson law can say but then in the general law itself only one canon it, uh, you should have diocesan law with regard to your parish finance councils and go ahead ultimately canon 532 says in all juridical matters the parish priest represents the parish in all juridical matters the bishop represents the diocese ultimately one thing is, some of our fathers or even lay people say, everything is consultative. Even by consultation, one participates in the governance. Only a stupid, immoral fellow, conscienceless fellow will, when majority say, invariably go against it. So, do not fail to express your opinion when you are asked. Like Prophet Ezekiel says, God is telling Prophet Ezekiel, they will not listen to you, doesn't matter. You just speak. So also you voice your opinion. You voice your opinion. Even if it is not listened to, ultimately they will have to give account to God. Yes. Yes, Father. Yes, very good. Yeah. The number of things are there, we do not know some of those things. Yes. Especially with the gradual of one party is Catholic and the other party is non Catholic. Okay. So, in the change of the scenario and the change of the political scenario, we are in the context. Suppose many people, especially in the ages, who are working in the IT field, they will have either a kind of love marriage for you, like that, wherein the person. Thank you. 
Okay. So the okay, father. The father is asking a question regarding disparity of cult marriages. We call them when one is Catholic, other is non-baptized. We call such marriages disparity of cult marriages. When one is Catholic, the other is baptized non-Catholic. We call them mixed marriages. So that is the difference between disparity of cult and mixed marriages. What I say, Father, is virtue stands in the middle. Virtue uh, stands in the middle. Uh, yeah. Anything else I miss? The Bible says that everyone needs to marry. But whereas the boy's family is so particular that we want our daughter to be married as a cat. So okay, no, no, no problem. You get your family and come to the beach and then follow this Bible. But whereas the Bible says they can play Okay, okay, let me finish, then you will okay. get uh, clarity. Okay. First of all, one of the things after Vatican Second is respect for other churches and other religions. Nobody should be forced to embrace the Catholic faith. Canon 748. It is never lawful for anyone to induce others to embrace the Catholic faith against their conscience. Even if he is parish priest, he is going against the law. Against our own law, it is never law. What I said, virtue stands in the middle. One parish priest, because he wants to marry a Catholic, baptize him within two days, three days. That is not correct. Another parish priest, three years. That is also not correct. You, you need not prepare for three years. After baptism, three years to join the seminary maybe. You should not immediately join. Not necessarily for a marriage. If some parish priest says, you need three years for baptism, then such a matter must be referred to the bishop. That's all. Such a matter must be, he says, it is uh, the three years means that that is it. Otherwise, only for the sake of marriage, somebody wants baptism, we should be very hesitant. But in our context, what we have to do when RSS and the Hindutva movements are there, let him give an affidavit that he is voluntarily embracing the Catholic faith. Give him sufficient instruction uh, in the Christian faith if he wants to become a Catholic. And that way we have to proceed. For your information, we have brought a booklet to answer all your questions. I can leave it to you. This, it is not only for Archdiocese of Bombay, initially prepared Canon Law Commission and also the Family Commission jointly answering all these questions. Mixed marriages and disparity of cult marriages. What are the things to be followed? What are the things to be followed? Everything is given there. In the Canon Law, Canon 1125 says, what are the conditions that are required for a dispensation to be obtained? That's all. So, uh, that's given. So, the non-Catholic party has to uh, be informed of the promises of the Catholic party who says, I will not defect from the faith. I will do all in my power to bring up the children in Catholic faith that is needed for the dispensation or permission to be obtained from the bishop. That's how we go about. So, some of the priests are too strict with the parishness. Okay, in the mixed, in the greater mobilization, some, uh, see, well, earlier it was very, very strict prohibition. We have to persuade them to marry Catholics. That is true. But once it is too much, too intimate, and then they, they will not be happy with another person. The girl may even commit suicide. In this situation, the right to marry prevails over your own uh, adamant attitude of not allowing them. Only that the church wants to take care, we don't lose the Catholic partner. We don't lose the Catholic partner. And the Catholic partner tries uh, to the level best that uh, the, to bring up the children in Catholic faith. That is it. So as priests, all the priests are here, you must understand. There is provision in law for dispensation for disparity of cult, subject to the conditions mentioned there. Okay, any other question? Yes. About the 
for instruction they may have the hope of getting baptism afterwards let them marry according to disparity of cult and later uh, let the other party receive baptism after sufficient instruction not simply increasing the number by pouring water that's not so that is the thing yeah you have to see the situation yes father yeah For a valid marriage, three things are needed. What makes marriage is consent. First one. All the three simultaneously must be present for a valid Catholic marriage. Consent makes the marriage. The second, it must be free from impediment. In this case, there was the impediment of disparity of cult. Thirdly, it must be celebrated in canonical form. There was no canonical form. Even if one party is Catholic, canonical form, that is, an authorized minister is needed. So, on two grounds, this marriage is invalid. Provided you have obtained the civil divorce, there is no bond recognized by the Catholic Church in this marriage. During the prenuptial investigation, so were you married either civilly or elsewhere where was a divorce obtained that itself suffices but each diocese can have its own policy no need of a long procedure no need of putting that case in the tribunal and all those things are not needed the diocese will give uh, clarity regarding that there is no need because there was no bond for us firstly there was a civil bond which has been separated so now the parties are free to marry but prenuptial uh, inquiry also a uh, form also can be enough that when it is uh, rightly attested yeah, can, yeah, Catholic party living with that man cannot receive no. the sacrament. Yeah, when the Catholic party is divorced, not yet married, receive sacrament. Let us not be over strict with that. Divorced can always receive the sacrament. Only divorced and remarried cannot receive the sacrament. That's why many priests are thinking falsely and people are put to undue uh, suffering by saying everybody who is diverse, everyone who is diverse cannot receive the sacrament. So the person may be in threat of her life, may be subject to, to torture every day. She had the right to appeal to the diverse. Then even recently, last month, Holy See answered, should you get permission to go to uh, from the Holy See for ap uh, appealing for divorce in the civil government? Holy See said, no. Every faithful has the right to appeal for civil divorce when they are unbearably suffering. Yes. Yes, Father. So, not the same people. Uh, so, let us uh, uh, share the questions. Huh? Very good. 
I am happy. I am happy to uh, give some clarification. Some of you don't uh, uh, keep quiet when you have some quest questions. Even if it is offensive to some, some people, I will make it not offensive to anybody. Don't be worried. Yes. Uh, there was a marriage in the Catholic Church. Yes. And afterwards, she left her husband. Yes. Yeah. And living with another married person. Yes. And had a children. And he's asking for communion. Communion for the children or this? Not children, for uh, her. For her. And we give it up. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. This is uh, uh, with regard to. She, you say she is living with another married man. Another married man, but not married. Only no. as a keep. Only as a yeah. Only as a keep. Okay. One thing is marriage. The another is living, or even going and committing adultery and then doing like that. Now, can she be given communion, provided she makes a good confession and promises that henceforth she will not live with that man? <laughs> yes. Otherwise, you give me communion, I will go with him. She is living in an invalid union. Invalid union. That's it. Huh? So, not possible to come away from him. So, it is possible to deny her communion. Yes, that's what. But do we feel sad? So, every confession involves a firm resolve not to sin. The reason is that that man, uh, first marriage is still valid. And this is uh, a permanent public union. Canon 915 speaks about people to whom communion can be denied. 915. Uh, those uh, uh, who are excommunicated and interdicted. And those who uh, manifest in grave sin publicly should be denied communion. Public manifest grave sin, you should deny only. But not deny when she comes in the line. She receives communion somewhere, you don't know, doesn't matter. But then you have to tell her before the Mass. Ma, you are living with that man publicly. Uh, that is contrary to the teaching of the church. So, please don't cover tactfully. You have to tell her. Yes. On may on behalf of the party. Yeah. Or uh, empathy for the yeah. master's voice of the party. Yeah. I will say that it's not attempted marriage. Mm. But it's almost like attempted marriage. Yes. Uh, because poor habitation. Yeah. No one was public. Yes. So the parish community. Yes. Yes. Is there enough reason to deny yeah. a community? Yeah, in this case, there is enough reason, provided she wants to convert. Yes, Father. One married marriage between both Catholic parties. Yeah. After some time, the civil divorce and separated. Yes. Another lady, Catholic, wants to marry the man. Yeah. So they were married in the church, but yes. divorced. Yeah. Now the Catholic party wants to marry. Okay. He's free to marry, but the man is not free to marry according to church law. Yes. So, Ladies, I ask, when can we go for a fresh call? Everybody is going to go. Second hand. Huh? Since he wants to marry. Huh? No, you yourself gave the answer. I don't know what is your question. But uh, she wants to marry. No, she wants to marry. You said church annulment is needed. Because one thing uh, is very clear. The church recognizes the marriage blessed in the church. The, the civil government recognizes the marriage. But civil government does not recognize our annulment. On our part, we recognize neither the marriage nor the annulment or divorce given by the civil government. So, to marry again in the church validly, you should be civilly free and canonically free. Canonically free. Even if your marriage is in fact invalid, if the church has not yet declared it invalid, still we cannot bless the marriage. 
the marriage may be before god invalid she was forced but our tribunal has not taken up the case that's why now new motu proprio from december 8 onwards it is effective that has come such apparent cases the bishop can take up the case in the shorter process and finish it in one month finish the case in one month if some marriages are apparently invalid because of that yes uh yes father next i will come to you but catholic boy got mm. married in the church the other part also is catholic the church was the marriage was solemnized in the church yes and then they have got three children yes and what happened is that the whole the actual wife died or stayed in church yeah oh, you said about actual wife what about <laughs> no, no. i don't get it yeah. Yeah. only one wife he had no yeah he died or the marriage is solemnized in the church okay okay the wife died the children yes and then the late another lady was there she was married to some other boy yeah what happened is that she left him and came back to stay with him in this time okay because of the okay. relationship right? relationship and they have the court the divorce also is there yes now they want to rectify this marriage they have got another two children here also yeah what shall i do what shall i do the first marriage is still valid court divorce only is obtained yes the marriage of the other woman is still valid they are also catholics no he also got married again huh he got married once no he let him get married the bond can be broken only by death this man the first marriage is okay no problem he is free the woman is not free the woman who left her husband is not free even though she got a civil divorce even though her husband married somebody else her, the woman who came to marry this man must get an ecclesiastical annulment yeah it's difficult only it is tough only but you have to find out ways and means ways yes a uh, father, father was waiting there okay then here then father yes the board this and the yes yes the board board marriage yeah and that that marriage they have two children and after complaint apparently of the he suspected the fertility of the wife and it was almost a current that she was not being pulled in after 27 years no no before 27 no, okay. years before the day you okay so they got a kind of suspicion the wife uh, moved away from him and he came over to Vaishra right? something happened in Kannada in my own area so she got married to a patient and this patient came my dear after so many years the patient came on from a marriage in Delhi from them he has got two children none of them but he and he like that Now this man is very earnestly coming and requesting father and his sister to come in and take this baby. And I told him that the first time I did that, he mentioned there is not even a divorce, but though he has gone and come, and he is there. I told him that he will not be able to ask for a sign. No, but then the lady now comes and she pleads, pleads, and then suddenly she leaves and says, "What have I done? I have two children, four from this person." And about this situation, what shall I do? Shall I give the baptism to this woman? Children are already baptized, and they are kept okay. But this lady, now, is again too late. Twenty-two years, that is, for four years, they are living together. Okay. So, uh, yes, father, you can sit here. <laughs> okay. So, this is really a pathetic situation. difficult problem long back he came away and then marry so for such cases only the last extraordinary synod and then the normal synod were thinking whether we can consider some leeway and all the principle of indissolubility still remains so we cannot compromise on it because it is divine law the first marriage is indissoluble i always speak of all marriages in principle are indissoluble even hindu marriages are indissoluble sacramental marriages receive an additional firmness 
sacramental and consummated marriages are absolutely indissoluble so this man's marriage whether it happened 20 years ago or 50 years ago it was sacramental marriage for the church and consummated marriage and it is absolutely indissoluble only thing is it might have appeared sacramental and consummated but in fact it was not a valid marriage valid marriage is only absolutely indissoluble if you can declare the invalidity of the marriage only when you declare the invalidity uh, invalidate declare the invalidity on the basis of defective consent on his part when you go to the history in that way only we can help but situations may be really pathetic we understand but we can't make a compromise with regard to divine law which stands by the indissolubility so that's why we you all preach you know this is uh, uh, irrevocable consent we both by mutual consent cannot revoke our families cannot revoke once it is given it is marriage like that we say no that is it that's uh, real see your uh, question is such that uh, really for these things maybe the senate fathers were considering but i am not very hopeful that they are going to change it then it will be touching the divine law yes in this case i mean this uh ஒன் <laughs> Yeah. yeah no no see you are going to give her baptism provided she is going to uh, not live in that union and that is not possible uh, provided she promises to live with him as brother and sister not possible either <laughs> so canonis may say this uh, the teaching so again uh, we cannot deny yes father this is a case catholic marriage yes catholic party hmm the honeymoon night the man finds that his wife is a third gender okay and then when he shows next day she gives she goes to her parents house now he marries another woman and then he will go to the whole party party now he has to go to a new place we can you show them yeah surely tribunal will surely give yeah marriage is between man and woman yeah. woman and man not man and not man uh, so oh that's it the tribunal can take up the case and then when there is proof yeah and then prove that the lady that that can be still there is not married is yeah. not no problem no problem nobody is obliged to live with the third gender so it is an invalid marriage first marriage is invalid marriage only tribunal has to declare it as invalid in the case whether the case whether the wife is married yeah uh and uh yeah what is the case of our case and this said in this hour we have marriage we want to be can we say that there is no indecision yeah and yes yeah, we are establishing the first marriage and then uh some uh the validity of principle are acting yeah there is yeah. that yeah. and another and then see us three to marry again yes surely one thing is indissolubility doesn't come into the picture and the marriage is invalid both cases that's it so first marriage is valid here the marriage is invalid so no problem for uh, annulling it yes for the father was uh, waiting for long time yes. so only marriage cases eh? we can take up other cases also marriage cases are complicated cases yes we know that yeah this is a one lady goes to another marriage and gets married 
One lady goes to another parish with all the papers from here, baptism no, certificate. No, 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 without the knowledge of the parish priest. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> then how the other parish priest? And uh, when I asked her uh, regarding the uh, embedded, you cannot receive embedded because he is living with another man. So I said, you can receive embedded because you are living with another man. Because you are living with another man. You cannot receive embedded because you are living with another person. If you forsake that uh, relation, you may be able to receive that communion. Communion, yes. But, uh, uh, she said they have no uh, priest concerned who baptized me. I told the person, but uh, he gave me the baptism. So, what do you no, say? No, uh, I do not completely get it. See, the uh, person from a parish goes to another parish and gets, uh, gets baptized there. No, gets the baptized. Priest, uh, okay, that's okay. All right. So, she separated. He is living with another man. Okay. And that man is a man when he doesn't want to leave that. Okay. And she is asking a man for that. Already they asked that question. I said you cannot give communion. You cannot give communion. I told her. Yeah. But I have told the priest who baptized me. I told the priest that, uh, that I am living with this man. But uh, uh, no, don't worry about that. <laughs> that priest is, uh, we should not worry about that priest also. So you should learn the law of the church, teaching about the church. <laughs> huh? And only bishop should worry about such priest. Huh? To send him back once again to the seminary. Okay. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Married a Hindu woman after converting to her and the manager was well man in the church. Hindu was yeah, converted. So, ba two baptized yeah. persons married. Okay. Married. So yeah. This, uh, sacramental, uh, marriage. sacramental marriage. Sacramental marriage. Okay. Uh, now, after having lived in marriage for a couple of years, yes. unfortunately, they didn't have children. So, when they, the parents of the woman, they thought of sending their younger girl who was a school going to get. And with the girl and girl did not know what is the mind of the parents. But they sent that girl along with the son in law. And then started her studies. And she was with the girl, elder sister and the brother in law. And the first time, she conceived four children mm. and this girl okay. gave three children. And they have lived with both the sisters and this man and the children lived happily for about maybe some another 15 to 20 or more years. Okay. In the same family, no problem. But this girl is not baptized. Which so one? The younger girl oh, okay. is not baptized. But the Brother Vendro, or rather now we are at the also, he was Catholic and the woman, the sister was practiced in the Catholic family. Only this woman who got three children from that man was not practiced. But the children in the course of time asked the group of who they were practiced and they are Catholics. Only this woman, very regular to the church, the religious practices and very actively involved in all the parish activities. Now, she got separated from this man and she is living alone. The children come and go in a separate house. Now, this woman is asking for baptism and communion. I am coming always to the church and I am praying to Jesus, but I cannot receive communion. So, I want to receive communion. She is living separately. And she wants to receive the meaning and get baptized. So, can be baptized. Yeah, it's a similar case we dealt with. So, the answer is the same like the, this woman doesn't, will not have anything to do with that man again. 
will not have anything to do with that. She makes a good confession, maybe. But then you have to see the Paschal situation, the circumstances and things like that. But according to me, the woman can receive baptism if he is not going back to that man. Even a few years back, they have come to an understanding that they will not have any more things. Oh, okay. That's what I, I answered it. Yeah, I answered it already. No, yeah, that's what. Yeah, only that. Only that the woman is not going to do anything. She is, she, whatever might have been the past, the woman comes for baptism with repentance. Uh, saying that uh, I am sorry for all my sins of the past and then I am uh, wanting to lead a Catholic life. Very good if she is not going to live in a... because that man is still bound by the bond. That's all finished. Uh, yes, yeah, some young priests also can ask some questions. Only elders are asking more questions. Those who ask questions, you can keep quiet here after. Those who have not asked, you ask. Yes, except the bishop. Okay. <laughs> Let us give chance to others. Yes. Catholic boy is married to a Hindu girl. Hmm. Hindu marriage. Yes. 15 years are over. Hmm. And he has some two daughters. And the woman is very adamant. She doesn't want to come to the church. Yes. But now he is starting to come to the church. And he is feeling that I want to receive, uh, make an impression of receive from me. Hmm. Can we give, give him this duty to the church? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in the Jubilee year of mercy, everything that is unlawful cannot be made lawful. <laughs> One thing. Uh, okay, for second question is, now we have to rectify that marriage if they are still living together, no? Uh, uh, rectify, then you can give. The wife doesn't want to The wife need not come. Who is Catholic? Man, uh, man is Catholic. Wife need not come. Uh, uh, for the rectification of the marriage, what is needed is uh, dispensive. Wife need not come means she doesn't even uh, want to allow him to do like that. Uh, he is coming. No, rectification, what is it? Dispensation from the disparity of cult and canonical form. At least one day the wife must be persuaded to come for him to practice the faith. That much he should have. A wife doesn't want him to be a Catholic also. I don't think so. Yeah. Wife uh, wants him to be a Catholic. She, she can explain to the wife, I can receive communion only when my marriage is recognized in the church. Please come for a day secretly. No problem. It should not be a problem. Just persuade her. Uh, very adamant to come to then Sanasya and Radhiche from Bishop exceptional case you can get a dispensation for the renewal of concern she has to come but that, that, has, that means she doesn't want him to practice Catholic faith no no Catholic faith means he has to receive communion no so for that she has to cooperate no minimum Minimum, even outside, the priest can go to her place, take him there also and go to her place. Uh, just renewal of consent, if exceptionally to help this man. Yeah, that is exceptional case with the permission of the bishop. Not necessarily she has to come to the church, even in a common place. The place of renewal of consent in the disparity of cult need not necessarily be the church. Yeah. Even in the church yeah. and Yeah. No, I did not get bishop. Without congregation. Yeah. Yeah. Without congregation, no, no, no need of any congregation. Okay. Witnesses needed, yes. Okay. Um, yes, two, yeah, many young hands are being made. Yes, Father. One can be a protestant. Okay. And they see the parents in that church. Okay. Now, now and then, they, when they come to the gate, they want to receive a communion. Is it allowed? So, excommunicated, uh, see, by um, receiving, joining other churches, uh, uh, there is lotus and then say excommunication. Uh, but it is not a declared. But then they can make a good confession, and then uh, which is not uh, which is reserved to the bishop unless some priests are given faculty here. They are not coming there for them. Uh, don't, don't give them. Don't give them. Don't give them. 
permanently coming back means they want this one and that one also. Yes, father. Next. Then the last father. Yes. A man got married with a woman in the Catholic Church. Yeah. Both of them lived together for two years. Hmm. Both Catholics. After yeah. two years, hmm. the woman disappeared for five or five years. Hmm. Meanwhile, the man waited, waited, waited. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, the man got married to another lady. After six years, the first, the first wife came back. Now, which marriage becomes well, is it first marriage or second marriage? Surely first I will read the canon 1707. Second marriage where? Ah. So, second marriage you celebrated in the church only. Yes. How the priest celebrated church? So I will read the, what the law of the church says for your question. Okay. Uh, please, please listen attentively. Not in the church. Yeah. Then why do you get for the ma for a valid marriage three things are needed. Just now I taught. What are the three things? Consent. No impediment. Second marriage is invalid. No, according to your answer. Yes. Then why are you asking the question? <laughs> for a valid marriage. But still, let us listen about presumed death cases. What is the procedure? But still. Whenever the death of a spouse cannot be proved by an authentic ecclesiastical or civil document, the other spouse is not regarded as free from the bond of marriage until diocesan bishop has issued a declaration that death is presumed. Bishop has to declare that death is presumed. Second paragraph. The diocesan bishop can give this declaration only if after making suitable investigations he has reached moral certainty concerning the death of the spouse from the deposition of the witnesses from hearsay and from other indications the mere absence of the spouse no matter for how long a period is not sufficient you said five years even 20 years somebody is absent it is not sufficient Bishop should have sufficient proof to declare that death is presumed. She went to Velangani during tsunami. Death is presumed. <laughs> huh? So she did not come back. So no matter how long it doesn't. And finally, in uncertain and involved cases, the bishop has to consult the Holy See before issuing that declaration. So in any case, uh, reset. Okay, all marriage. Last question, if it is okay. The question that I have asked. Yeah. Uh, same question I have asked one priest to be planned. He said uh, you can take a declaration from the man telling that I will in future I will convert my wife, I convince my wife and bring, bring my wife and children to the church and in writing in a declaration. If he gives, he can give it from me. That's from from uh, whom? From the wife. From the wife, no. no. First of all, rectification is needed. No. The marriage is not rectified, no. For rectification, what is needed? One thing is, consent is there. Consent is there, but it has to be renewed. In the simple convalidation, it has to be renewed. Simple convalidation, it has to be renewed. So, there is uh, impediment, absence of canonical form. Two things are there. When consent is there, only these two things are missing. The bishop, in difficult cases, can always make a sanasio and radiche. That is, uh, healing from the root. If consent is not there, only the problem. So, normal way of parish priest rectifying is by renewal of consent. By renewal of consent. Don't believe that canon is. So, marriage has to be rectified. For rectification of marriages, what happens? You know the three things. Consent is there in this marriage. But only that, these two things, one is celebrating in canonical form, you are needed. Even from celebration from canonical form, bishop can dispense. Some, uh, some uh, form can be there. That's what. So, rectify the marriage. 
make it valid before the church by doing what can be done okay thank you thank you for your questions but uh, i was expecting uh, so many you know, areas like religious diocese relationship bishop priest relationship and uh, other structures of participation in other places they ask so many difficult questions thank you for asking only about marriage <laughs> And we so have an applause to Father Ryan for the second round. Yeah. And we have an applause to Chief President here. I would like to thank you, Father Ryan, for, for uh, taking time to be with us. And we have a great in the uh, responses, the authorities of the Canon Lawyer, we have a great in all of us, the matters that are raised as the confiscations of the knowledge of change for a very, very good point. Thank you. For, uh, thank you. Thank you, Bishop, for the invitation. Yeah, yeah Father, uh, 